Hey guys, it's a Sunday around noon. We're gonna go bowling and or for a walk. We keep being indecisive. We're gonna either go to Malahide Castle or St. Anne's Park. It's a little bit gloomy and stuff, but we like just needed something to do to get out of the house. I'm really excited because I just got a phone call from my dad and my American driving license arrived at his house and when I went to do the process online, it was so quick, smooth, easy, fast, and it was only $18, which feels wrong as well. Um, mine expires at the end of next month. I don't know, because I did it early, was that helpful? Or maybe I'm used to, actually, I, I would always probably be doing it late and have a late fee in the States. Maybe that's why it feels cheap. I didn't expect to actually like receive it. I thought like something was gonna go wrong because it felt like it went so smoothly. But that's really good to have that out of the way because I thought like I was gonna run into an issue, I guess. I thought I was just going to need to go into the Secretary of State. Like maybe they would need a new picture of me or an updated photo or something. It's just nice to have that, um, keep up with it, keep it active because like for example, when we moved back over here, Gary had not kept up with renewing his Irish driver's license. And technically, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but his had gone so expired that he was supposed to do everything all over again, like the theory test, the 12 lessons, the driving test. And that shit is a pain in the ass. He got really lucky with whoever he dealt with and they just reinstated his driving license, which I do think is how it should be. I don't think it should be so difficult every single thing for everyone in this whole country but anyways my point is i don't want something like that to happen in the states if it would um i'm gonna go i have some more updates but i can check in later gary is getting a coffee right now yeah i have more stuff to say i have things to say i'll talk to you guys later and uh bye The botanic gardens at the Malahead Castle. The butterfly house is closed. They're doing some improvements on it, but we're just taking a walk because we've never brought dad in here with us. So we're gonna do this and then we booked in for a castle tour, which is really cool. I wonder if I can record in there. I'll try if I can. It's included in my membership, so that's nice. And then we're gonna go get some lunch. It was really cool, really interesting. There's like 800 years of history with it. Um, I got a few clips. You weren't supposed to take videos, but I took a few clips and then I took some pictures. Did you like that, babe? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Really cool. yeah. Well, Molly was a little bored. It's maybe not like the most exciting thing for kids, but Kiva loves learning yeah. interesting facts and stuff. So she enjoyed it. And she learned about a ghost and a. And there, and a there's a ghost, ghost in there. And a, what's it called? And uh, hookah. Wait, what did they say I missed? I think I was taking a picture. What's the job of the, what is it? A hookah? A hookah. Yeah. A puka? Like, it kind of tricks people. Was it a ghost? Yeah. It's a uh, shape shifter. It was a, it was a type of ghost. It's a shape shifting like, person. Yeah. Person ghost thing. Very interesting. Yeah, the Talbot family lived in that house um, basically over the span of like 800 years, yeah. did they say, babe? And it was only like sold to the city council within the past maybe 50 years or so, yeah, like maybe around the last of the Talbots who were actually cousins, like it went on the family through <coughs> their children. And then when they didn't have children, it went to cousins, you know, of the Talbots in, in 1948. And in 1976, they sold it to the government. Yeah. 1.6 million. 1.6 million. And now you can just get a house across the street over there for 1.6 million. Okay, we're gonna go get some lunch at one of our favorite little restaurants. They do really nice 
kind of pub food and stuff. I'm gonna get a cheeseburger. So we're gonna drive back towards our house and get some food. And we'll uh, see you later. another another time. Guys, um, the kids are at school. It's the morning. I went to Malahide Castle literally just to go to the little cafe area and get this piece of banana bread because they're literally divine. Actually, that's what I meant to ask my mother-in-law yesterday. I wanted to ask her something and then we got sidetracked and I kept thinking in the conversation, what else did I want to say to you? And it was that if, if I buy a loaf of the banana bread, it's 10 euros, so like I don't want it to go to waste, but would she eat half? I'm gonna ask her today. I'm feeling kind of positive today. I just, you know, I saw a video on TikTok. It's like semi-randomly came up on my For You page, but it was this girl who goes to like refugee sites. Um, I think they're actually in England. She sounds British. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I know I know those things, but sometimes I guess just a reminder like that to put something into perspective of just how lucky I am. It's like, how can I complain about anything? Maybe it wasn't the situation that I had in my mind and things didn't go how, kind of how I thought I was, but like, obviously I'm still so blessed. And I do know these things. It wasn't like, that's not, it wasn't like a groundbreaking situation. I, I always try to remind myself of that stuff literally all the time. Um, I thought I was going to say something else, but I don't Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go and I will check in later. Hey guys. So I'm just checking in here. I guess, well, yeah, I'm giving a little bit of an update. Um, Well, first things first, we have to, we found out like about a week ago that we have to be out of this house by May 1st. We did a couple weeks prior to that. Um, We kind of learned we thought we had until July but yeah, it turns out it will be May 1st, which is still like unbelievably gracious of the owners of this house to have let us stay this long when we had originally asked and told them we would only need it until just before Christmas. And then when everything went down, they were incredibly supportive and so helpful. And so literally giving us an additional four to five months is completely amazing. But nonetheless, it's still just because of the position we're in. Um, I don't know. I don't want to use the word disappointing because we're certainly not disappointed in them. But um, given where we're, we're at with things and the process in which um, the, t the time it takes for things to happen in Ireland, um, it's just cutting it kind of close for being able to be moving into a home by May 1st. And what you might be thinking is, well, would you not just um, uh, accept the fact that you need to rent more, rent again, and find another rental? And I mean, maybe it will come down to that, but we, I keep my eye on um, rentals in the area all the time, and they are like basically a minimum of like 2500 a month to 3000 and that's just really, that's just a, that's a lot with trying to save for a house or at least not dip into our savings. Um, it's just a little bit of a worrisome thought. We just, you know, it's, it's not ideal. Okay. And that brings me to our next point. So we lost the house we thought we were getting basically, I think by like the, the first of December. So we've had nearly two months to look for houses, but it was the holidays and long story short, we really only saw like two to three homes essentially so that's that's not a lot of house hunting um in options to be making like what i consider to be you know a pretty large per large and important purchase um i wanted to go into buying a home also with the intention of being there for like quite some time you know we've moved around a lot but yeah that that's one thing is like i i don't want to just grab somewhere and then oh you can move in a few years you just you don't know or we're buying when the prices are at the very top i mean that you know are very high and yeah i just i just want to settle all we've moved throughout our whole relationship like literally seven times in the states and then four times over here basically we've accepted that we have to start moving forward with a house that i've mentioned recently which it has a good location um so that's great um there's some definitely good things going about it nice kitchen um the downstairs is, is a pretty nice size actually yeah but a couple things the people that are living in it currently hadn't even started looking for a home of their own which is just a little unsettling because obviously that's gonna take a, a long time 
And what if they change their mind? And it makes me feel less secure with counting on, hey, this is when we're moving in. But when we did actually make an offer to see what they'd say, they asked us for even more money. And then they asked us, well, we had said, can you be out by March 31st? They said, no, we want to be in there until April, like mid to late April. Anyways, first of all, now that we need to be out by May 1st, that's pushing it. The house would need new carpet and painting and cleaning. And I'd have to clean this house and move a lot of the stuff by myself. And then the other thing that keeps weighing heavily on my mind, I'm, I really am such an overthinker, but I think I'm at least relatively valid. And actually, this is where I would like, if anyone happens to have any feedback, I would really, out of everything I've ever asked for feedback on, probably appreciate this exceptionally. Um, I appreciate this more than usual. But okay, so this house had pyrite in it. And we are hiring like a surveyor so hopefully that should maybe give us some clarity or some information and stuff. But they, when, when we saw the house, obviously the estate agent doesn't have much information. They're not going to be um, providing any like remediation certificates or anything like that. But he did say that the house had, it did have pie, right? And that it had been taken care of. But I've done a good bit of reading online and... I guess I still feel worried. I think in the whole scheme of things, technically pyrite can be completely remedied, but there's just other things to think of. Like one thing I read online, for example, was said, and basically it almost implied that if the pyrite problem went on long enough, that it could have maybe caused damage to the property's structure because I will I guess I'll just speak for this part of Ireland and it's my understanding that if a house is affected by pyrite, it's mainly in the like foundation, like at the bottom as opposed to the stone in the walls. So I guess, I mean, over the years, if the pyrite problem went without being fixed for long enough, could the problem in the foundation affect other parts of the structure, I guess? It's like, will it affect its resale value? I mean, here we, I am feeling apprehensive about what otherwise is a house that has a lot going for it. Yeah. And then it's also like, how do you know who you can trust? Even though I've done a good bit of reading, I'm obviously still not thoroughly knowledgeable. And then I just also feel like, how do you trust people? Like I'm already kind of, from what happened, um, I have a hard time trusting people. I mean, is it truly 100% like worry-free? I don't know. I mean, like, yes, Homes are remedied of it, but do we know what things can be like in 10 or 20 years down the line? It's just when you're paying very top dollar, I mean, homes and literally buying a home is an expensive task. Just feels like, a, I don't know, a risky, a, a somewhat risky thing, but I know a lot of homes over here have it. I know people have bought homes that had pyrite and were fixed and then they purchased it afterwards. Um, I'm a warrior. I definitely think I'm I'm at least somewhat valid. I think my questions are for sure valid. I mean, especially because I, I don't know that parts of the states dealt with pyrite. I know in Canada from my research online, the issue was there. I found a website that was kind of helpful. Any feedback, leave me that in the comments below, please. I have to stop talking. Thank you guys for listening. If you've made it this far, um, yeah, I'll check in later. Okay. Let's talk, everyone, because what you are now looking at is a an expert on pyrite. Um, I've actually recorded like several different um, little recordings of myself that I had kind of wrapped. I was wrapping up this video that you're watching, but I keep like wanting to tweak it or add something. And now it's like days later, just a couple days later. Um, and I'm going to come on and I'm going to do it this time. This is going to be the last clip I record. Um, I think I put in the earlier part of this video because I've edited that I'll put it down in the description. So maybe I'll do that too, if anyone's that curious. But I'm just going to go ahead and say here, pyrite is a mineral. Actually, here it says it's also known as fool's gold, which I've heard of before. But anyways, when pyrite is in building materials. So when the developers or builders source their materials from a quarry, this pyrite basically got into the like cement mixture or maybe it was called aggregate or something. But basically it's in the foundation of homes 
in Ireland and I think actually on the west coast and some of the other counties that were affected outside of Dublin actually it's in the brickwork in the wall or the stones or the bricks in the wall um might contain pyrite actually but yeah as far as I know it's mostly in the foundation of the homes that are in Dublin and the problem with it is that when moisture or oxygen hit it it expands and it causes cracks and damage and yeah it can just be bad I mean I think it can eventually if if not dealt with in time or the longer it goes I think potentially at least maybe it could be I don't know if it can affect the structure of your home who wants to take that chance but anyways the homes built around the years of like I think 2003 to 2005 had pyrite in them and in my research it's seemingly so that the developer and the home building company like are not at fault like they sourced the materials supposedly didn't know I would have to imagine that pyrite what was known like it was known what pyrite would do I don't think it was like they didn't know anything about pyrite I just think they didn't know that it was in the materials that they were using I read that there ended up being like a huge court case um against I think the home building company um from the people who just bought all the homes because there's like new home developments and like a good bit of homes and these people bought the homes and then moved into them. And then I think just a few years later, they realized that they had this problem and they started seeing evidence of problems. And as you can imagine, like, that's just crazy. Like you just spend multiple hundreds of thousand dollars on a home and, and, and it's a new home. Not that that matters. It would be terrible either way. And then you have a problem that's like literally destroying the foundation of your home and it's going to cost tens of thousands of euros to fix. And yeah, it's not like you can just sell your house because nobody, nobody would buy it. I mean, not that you'd want to sell a house that's falling apart, but yeah. Anyways, I think that's about it. I do think that the developer and the quarry might have like went head to head I don't I don't know I, I I did stop reading after a little while yeah there was I think Ireland did eventually like the government have a, a scheme for the houses that were affected I think sometimes the builders themselves did the repairs on the home um I was reading like I said a good a good little bit and there's different areas in different counties in one case in particular I think it was just so many homes that the builder or the damage the cost of fixing the damage done and repairing all the homes foundation and stuff was like 25 million euro so yeah I guess the bottom line is obviously be aware of that when you are searching for a home it's something to think about and something to ask i i think i know how how it goes for the most part because actually my in-laws estate has homes with pyrite in it but you can get your home tested for pyrite they dr dill a drill a hole into your your floor of your home downstairs like through the actual floor whatever you have and down into the foundation and they test for it if they don't find it you can get a green certification and then I think there's like an amber cert and a red like red means you need to completely have it fixed and I think amber might be some amounts of pyrite but not enough to cause damage or something like that and if you do have pyrite and it is causing problems or you do need to get it you know fixed and then I think you get a re remediation certificate afterward so I think the bottom line for us is and what I've gathered from talking to different people Gary talked to a surveyor who's definitely familiar with pyrite and familiar with the area that we are looking at it seems like as long as the problem is remedied properly then you are good to go um I had mentioned that I was kind of worried like will there be problems that arise in the future because I don't know it was like around 2004 that these homes were built and then I think it was like more so around 2007 to 2010 that they're repaired so I mean it has been 10 years homes have definitely been bought and sold that were originally built 
with the pyrite problem. So as long as you have your surveyor in there and obviously checking for all the normal stuff they would, but they will probably, depending on where you're at or what a state, some they'll they'll probably just know off the bat to check or ask for that. But obviously you, you can mention it to them too. So they'll need to see the certifications as well. The surveyor that we were talking to said the bank will even want to see the remediation certificates for the house on either side of the house that you're looking to buy as well. Um, obviously the banks are lending out a hefty sum of money, so they wanna be sure um, that they're doing it wisely. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna go forward with um, having our house assessed, surveyed. I think, I hope I'm saying surveyor and surveyed. I think that's like what they say over here, but you know what I mean. <laughs> they're just doing a thorough inspection. You know what? I liked putting in some time and researching and kind of becoming familiar on a topic that I wasn't. I had heard of it. It can, I think it can be really problematic, but it can be repaired as well. I'm actually even a little bit curious to know, like in the home that we're looking to buy, did they actually see the effects of pyrite or did they just learn that the other houses in the estate had it? So they just went through and fixed their foundation. Yeah, one more thing is I think it can take like, like 10 to 20 years to show its effects. Don't quote me on all these things because yeah, I read a, a lot of different articles. But anyways, that's it. It's something to be mindful of. Yeah, several different counties were affected. So yeah, I would imagine it is, I think it is mainly homes that were built within that time phrase, time phase, <laughs> you know, essentially the early 2000s because I think it was just stuff that came from that quarry. Maybe there was other quarries too. Somehow pyrite got in the mix of things. That's basically it. Um, I had also said when I tried to film this portion yesterday that I did two more of my driving lessons and I have to do six total. So that's four of them and I have to do two more. I really like my driving instructor. She's like thorough and knowledgeable, you know, and knows what she's doing, good for preparation, but she makes me feel at ease as well. Like I feel comfortable. I don't feel intimidated. And she actually made me feel very validated for requesting a female driver because she, the first time we met, she said she had somebody that she was doing a lesson with just before me. And the lady had a male instructor, instructor. And I know not all men, all I'm saying is maybe sometimes men could potentially have the tendency to maybe come across as just a little bit more intimidating of an energy in a situation that can already maybe feel a little bit intimidating, especially to the sensitive. The lady before me had a male instructor that was like supposedly like really like rude and mean and not patient. Anyways, the lady, she said the lady like nearly cried of joy after she was done <laughs> with the lesson with the instructor that I had because she just felt more at ease. Okay, that's it. Last thing about driving is I got my letter of approval for my reduced driver's training back from the office in Cork that I had mailed my Michigan license and the application. And I got that back in under two weeks, which I think is like miraculous timing, no offense, but especially for a process in Ireland going through any sort of official office. Um. Yeah, I'm getting through all the things that I have to do, but I do have the test and I'm really nervous about that. I have to stop talking. It's been 14 minutes. I'm gonna edit it a little bit, but you guys don't need to hear me talking quite so much. And if I'm annoying to listen to, just imagine what it's like being me in my own head. If you liked this video, if you found my pyrite information spiel interesting, then please give it a thumbs up. If you think you might be coming back for more from me then you might as well subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i hope to see you in my next video bye, bye.